Hello everyone, it's Kiny here. Today we're going to be sewing the basic bodice block. For this you're going to need one to one and a half yards of plain non-stretch fabric. I am using lining. You're also going to need a long zipper, maybe about 18 to 24 inches long. Preferably a separating zipper, it'll make your work much easier. You're also going to need a copy of the pattern. I have traced mine out. It is a PDF pattern which you can download from the link below. And if you need help assembling it, there is a helpful video also linked below. Let's get sewing. First, we are going to start with the front. The front is placed on the fold. I am starting by aligning it on the fold of the fabric. The back needs to be in two pieces. You're going to need space for a seam allowance at the back for the zipper. So you can align it either to the folded side or the open side of your fabric. First, I'm going to add seam allowance. I recommended one inch or two centimeters at the sides. For the shoulders, you can use half an inch or one centimeter, but you can also use one inch or two centimeters at the shoulders just to make you have some more room for adjustments. For the hem, we only need half an inch or one centimeter for seam allowance because we're only going to stay stitch it. Similarly, for the armhole and the neck, you just need half an inch or one centimeter because they're also going to be stay stitched and if you're including a, uh, a sleeve you still need only half an inch or one centimeter so after tracing out your or marking out your seam allowances these are naked patterns you have to add seam allowances you should also transfer the notches to your stitching line so i am transferring the notches on the shoulders armhole sides and also marking where the darts are so do this before you cut out your fabric here i'm just pinning down my layers so that nothing moves around before i cut Remember to clip your notches after you cut out your pattern. Now for the back, I am using the fold of my fabric, but I have drawn in a one inch seam allowance for the center back where your zip will be. Similarly, I'm going to add my half inch or one centimeter seam allowance at the neck and the shoulders and the armholes. For the sides, I'm using one inch. As I mentioned earlier, you can use one inch or two centimeters for the shoulders if you need a little more room for adjustment. The back has two darts, one at the shoulders, one at the waist, so remember to mark both of them before you cut.
Now for the sleeve, you only need one sleeve to test this, but if you want to cut out two full sleeves, you can align it like this and cut out two full sleeves. If you want to cut out only one sleeve, you can align it this way and open up your fabric to cut out one. Now to conserve fabric, I am going to use these layers of scraps. I'm going to join them together at the center to create one big piece. So I have joined them and I have enough for my sleeve because I'm only cutting out one layer. Now for the sleeves, you can use half an inch all around or you can use one inch on the sides just to give yourself enough room for adjustments. Remember to mark the notches at the elbows and at the armholes. You have one notch for the front and two notches for the back. Now we're going to start with the center back. I'm simply going to sew down the center back first. I'm also going to pin my darts in place so that I'll do everything at the machine. Remember to align your darts, just pinch the two notches together and put your pin through your ruler drawn lines. This will ensure that they are smooth and accurate. Same for the front, pin your darts together, match your notches and make sure you pin through the lines. For the sleeves, we're going to sew two lines of gathering stitches on the cap to shape it and when we're going to match the notches at the elbows and sew down the underseam. So here I'm just sewing up the darts. Remember start from the wide side and sew down to the narrow side and don't backstitch, simply sew off your fabric. So our zip goes face down on the center back seam. I like to leave a little on top and a little at the bottom so that when I sew it, it's completely separated when I open the zipper. So you're just going to take it to the machine and sew around. You don't need the zipper to be tidy. It just has to work. After sewing it down, as you can see, I'm just going to separate it with a seam ripper. Just remove the stitches. Okay, 
Now that the back is done and the front is done, we're going to put them together. So you pin your shoulders, there's a notch on the front, match the notch to the dart on the back. Pin the sides, there's a notch on the sides too. Remember to sew at the proper seam allowance. I had one inch seam allowance on my sides, but I only had half inch seam allowance at my shoulders. So always remember the seam allowance you chose to use. Now for the sleeves, you're going to take your under threads, that's the bobbin threads, and pull just to gather the sleeve cap. I just gather it as much as it wants to go. I will stretch it out when I put it in the armhole. So you can see the notches that tell you the front and the back. Now I've gone ahead and sewn down my shoulders and my sides. So to put in your sleeve, you're going to put the bodice wrong side out and the sleeve is right side out so that they're facing right sides together when you put the sleeve in the armhole. Now the thing with the sleeve, you need to make sure the notches are facing the right way. When you match your armhole, the single notch should be facing the single notch and the double notch should be facing the double notch. If that doesn't work out, it means you are on the wrong armhole and you have to switch armholes as I did here. So you can see I am aligning everywhere. I pinned at my notches first Then I'm pinning the underarm seam. And finally, I will match the shoulder seam to the notch on the top of the armhole. I'm just moving away the gathering stitches. You need that place to be flat. So it's pinned in four places. And now I'm going to loosen my gathers a bit till it matches the armhole. As you can see, once it's nice and smooth and you pin that in place, do that for the other side. Loosen my gather stitches. And pin in place. Then you can pin the bottom curves. There are no gathering stitches here. Okay, now you're going to sew around. I like to sew from the inside, so it makes it much easier. So I'm just going to sew at half an inch all around. I'm sorry you can't see too clearly what I'm doing, but basically you want to just make sure you keep everything flat. When you're sewing, you try and feel and make sure you're not feeling any lumps so that everything is smooth. And that's the final product. It's very simple. You can try it on and do your fitting. You might have to clip into the next seams to make sure everything fits nicely. So let's move on to the adjustments. Now there are several places you can adjust your bodice. Let's start with the horizontals, which is basically making things wider or narrower. First, you pick your overall size. Maybe I've decided I'm a size 16. 16 back, 16 front, right? We'll start with the usual places. 
cross check your shoulder if you're happy with it if you're 16 shoulder is okay for you great but you can now blend it maybe you prefer a 14 shoulder you're simply going to take go from point 14 following the shape of the shoulder straight up you're going to draw a line straight into size 16 and mark that point so now you've shortened your shoulder you do the same for the front and the back right at the edge you go from your 14 following the curve of the shoulder and go straight up to the 14 line the next place we can check is across the back and across the front now these are independent you can change the back and leave the front or you change the front and leave the back or both it depends on your measurements now these measurements were not given here but you can just measure the one you want so i wanted a size 16 i'll measure from 16 line and check which is seven and three quarters so you multiply the answer by two and that will give you your full across back compare it to your measurement and you can adjust if i want to take it inside to 14 for instance maybe i prefer 14 back i'll put a dot at the 14 line take my ruler blend from my armhole sorry from my shoulder if you're a 16 for instance you blend from your 16 shoulder to your 14 armhole or 16 shoulder to your 18 armhole it doesn't matter if you had already adjusted the shoulder make sure you start from your new shoulder point to the new chest point or across back point it's the same thing so anytime you want to make adjustments put dots at any place you're adjusting maybe the shoulder or the back or the bust or wherever put the dots and retrace some new lines so that it marks and you remember you do it both to the front and the back next is the bust and the waist it's the same thing you can decide maybe your overall 16 but your bust is wider it's an 18 you trace from your 16 armhole stop at the 18 bust or maybe you wanted a smaller bust you can go from the 16 armhole stop at the 14 bust and the same thing once you've decided just use a ruler and match or merge the two points you do the same for the waist if you decided to shift between waist sizes go from your main bust or waist wherever you're starting from your original bust match it to the waist just with a straight line if i'm going from 16 to 18 I would just draw a straight line if i'm going from 16 to 14 the same thing just draw a straight line and do the same for the front and the back you can adjust the front and back independently but you have to be very careful with your math so if you're not sure what you're doing just do both of them equally now you can also do in between sizes exactly what we just did but perhaps you're between a 14 and a 16 or you're between a 16 and an 18 all you have to do depending on the spot maybe it's your bust if I'm between an 8 and a 10 I will simply put my ruler between the two points and find a halfway point and that becomes your new bust point you can do the same for a waist you put your ruler between the two points you're matching and find a halfway point and then you connect your points or your new points whichever they are with a straight line here if you do it at the armhole remember to use a curved ruler so that is how you can modify your width now if you're going to be modifying your width i would advise that you cross check your vertical measurements and pick by your vertical measurements so let's get into that for the back the vertical measurement you should be worried about is the center back line this is like your overall height so if to make things easier for myself i can just pick by my center back my i'm going to use my dress form for example my dress form falls into a size 14 for center back so this is a size 14 up to here from here to here is size 14. so what i can do now that i've decided that my dress form is a, a size 14 but her bust is quite big and it goes into an 18 
I'm simply going to extend, widen the pattern to an 18. I will use the 14 line, but when it comes to the bust, where she has some difference, so tracing down from size 14, instead of stopping at the 14 bust, for instance, I will extend it to an 18 bust. So when I'm tracing, I will go from 18 bust back into the 14 armhole. Or maybe her armhole is still wider. It's a combination. Okay, let's put it this way. I've chosen a 14 overall. I've decided that her shoulder comes out to a 16. I will simply widen the shoulder like this. Straight, put the line out to size 16. Mark, that's my new shoulder. I will check the chest. I'm widening it to a 16 too. So I'm combining 16 and 14 essentially. For the horizontals, I'm using 16 because she's wider. And for the vertical, I'm using 14 because she's shorter. So I'll extend this to 16, new armhole point, extend this to 16, new bust point. So now that I've marked all my wide points, the same with the waist, I'll extend it to 16, new waist point. So I'm using 14, going from the 14 shoulder, blending into 16 armhole, 16 bust, and 16 waist, and stopping, this is the important part, also stopping at the 14 waistline. I'll mark, I'll go from 14 straight to the 16 line. I'll mark my new waistline. So that is how you can blend two sizes if you're, it's, if you're worried about the length. So you'd select the length first and just widen the whole pattern. You can do the same for the front. Now for the front, the measurement we're concerned with is your bust depth. For the back, we use the center back for the height. For the front, we're using the bust depth. So using the size key, you're going to select by bust depth. And okay, maybe in my case, my bust depth is a 16. So overall, I'm going to use a 16, but my bust is an 18. So the same vein, now that I know I'm going to use size 16, I'm simply going to widen any places I feel need to be wider. Maybe 16 is fine, but I need an 18 bust. I need an 18 waist. So after tracing out the 16 with my pen, when I get to the bust, I'll go all the way to an 18 and the same thing for the waist. But remember at the waistline, I'll come back to a 16. So I'll stop. I'll take the 16 and extend it to the 18 and stop there. So I've just shortened the whole pattern while keeping it at the same, at the bigger width. So that is how you can blend. And of course, if you're not comfortable blending sizes, just pick a bigger size. So if I'm between 16 and 18, I will pick the 18. That way, when I sew it, you can easily reduce it to your exact size. Quickly going over the sleeve. For the sleeve, pick your size by your bicep measurement because that's the widest measurement. Then you can easily adjust the length. For the length, there's not much to it. You check which length fits your arm. Remember, you're measuring from your shoulder down to your wrist bone, shoulder bone to wrist bone. So if I picked a size 16, this is a size 16, and I feel like it's too long and I want to shorten it to a 14. I'm simply going to put the ruler on the 14 line and ex right at the edge here and extend to the 16 line. The same thing here. I will take the 14 line, extend to the 16 line. So that way when I cut a 16, I'll simply stop at that point that I have marked. So you can just shorten it. And if you shorten to a 14 at the base, when you're picking your notches for the elbow, you're also going to pick a size 14 a size 14 elbow so that the the balance of your arm is not distorted so i will also pick that the notch is that's what the sign is for it's just to tell you where your elbow is supposed to hit at least on average so i will also do the same thing i will note that oh this is the 14 notch and this is the 14 notch and you remember, if you're using size 16, that notch, you're just going to mark it on the 16 line. So I'm just extending it and marking it on the 16 line. 
So I've transferred that. Then you just trace out the sleeve as is. You don't need to do too many things to the sleeve because there's ease in the cap to fit into the armhole. Right, so that is all for the quick adjustments of the bodice. And remember, you can always just pick the bigger size if you are in doubt. Thank you for watching. I'm Kaine. I make pattern drafting videos. You can see more tutorials on the website. Feel free to ask questions or leave me comments. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day. Bye.